And the reason why there's always that kind of question, right, is because you're going to be going into two rounds of pistols anyways if you're Optic. If you lose that pistol, you're just going to be saving for quite some time. And so some teams, they just say, actually, we'll just spend all of our money here, we'll save again in the next round, and then we'll still get a good buy-in on the fourth round with the rifles. It's just that you're going to be a little light on the nades. You are going to be light maybe $1,000 that you would like to have for the nades. And if you wanted to buy the AWP sniper rifle, that would also be a problem, right? Yeah. Uh, but actually on this map, I don't particularly mind if they skip out on the orb. I don't think you have to have it on the CT side. So not necessarily the worst choice in the world. We'll see if they can get any kind of payback on this investment. So far not really happening. The B bomb side, sorry, the A bomb side has been lost already. And Optic, well, right now, I would probably just, yeah, they're going to do that. They're going to run away and save what they have. Because in the next round, as you were pointing out, they're not going to be able to buy anyway. Might as well save what they have here. Yeah, no, no, no. This makes a lot of sense. And maybe Mixwell can actually get that Deagle into the fight in the next round, hopefully. But NIP showing some, you know, some variety here in their plays as well. They went towards B in the pistol. This time around, they're going towards A. So they're trying to make themselves a little difficult to read here for Optic. So Optic, this means that when they approach their CT side, unless they want to gamble and say, right, we're going to have the four at B early on in the round because Nip might try and push, you know, put some pressure there early on. They have to play with two on A, three on B, just to spread out the defense because Nip are showing them, hey, we're not just going to focus on one site. We'll be all over the map. As the panel was talking about as we introduced uh, the Optic team, the one thing that, I mean, they, they sort of brought it up as a positive, and it is, Mixwell is a really great addition to this team, but it's also dangerous to have just that one guy that almost everything relies on. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder what happens to Optic if Mixwell gets shot down really well. Uh, we saw some, some of those stats that, that he does generally play quite well, but yes. you know, Moses was pointing out, against American teams, not necessarily the same. Exactly, there's a bit of a level between uh, North American teams, the best in NA versus, uh, you know, EU, or South America for that matter. I mean, Luminosity, they're pretty good right now as well, top team in the world. But uh, I guess it has to come down to that combination between Mix and Rush. Because Rush has also been put, posting strong numbers recently, he's been keeping things on their toes. Interesting, and Rush, well, there you go, speak of the devil, he gets in there, he trades one for one. So a solid start there for Optic. Yeah, just take a little bit of confidence away. It's always good when you're playing people like Forrest and Get Right to get a sense that you can actually get frags on them. Uh, so that you don't, in your mind, start telling yourself, oh, this guy's so good, we'll never be able to do anything, right? You've got to treat them just like a any old player, uh, which could be easier said than done. Good double for Freiburg there with the SMG, getting the kill reward bonus, and Mixwell still got the deal, and kit and armor. I mean, it's a bit silly to save in the third round, but at the same time, what could, he po what could he accomplish, you know, at this point? I think he's more frustrated about not getting a single chance. You know, that's two rounds running now where Nip went to the A site. He's playing, you know, he's playing that last man over on B, basically. So he's just slow to rotate in, and there's just nothing for him to work with here. He would love to be able to pick up maybe, like, a kill around with his Deagle, just get that extra 300 bucks in his pocket so that he can have, you know, a little bit more to work with in the next round coming up, some more money for nades. Or even, you know, if he goes ham with a pistol, right, maybe he does luck out and actually be able to pick up an AWP. But it seems like, for now at least, Mixwell might have to be the rifle. Now, I'm very curious about this map for NIP, because actually when, when Threat got to taking a, a look at this map, he's obviously the coach and, and I mean, the tactician for NIP. Um, <laughs> well, he's had that bear forever. Have they got a seventh man on the team here? Is that what we're looking at? He does, he does bring it everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah, he's had that. He's had that for ages now, it feels like. But when Threat's going to be, I mean, the first time you look at this map, he already came up with some new cool stuff. Those smokes that we see towards the B bomb side, and I'm wondering if he will have uh, progressed even more, if he's put even more work into it here. NIP, they went A the last two rounds, and this time it seems like they're going to hit uh, B pretty quickly. But Optic have a great setup for this. And while Optic aren't cutting any corners this time, actually. Well, they are, in the sense that they are putting four on B, and it is going to be that hard defense setup. There's Nap with the double spray down. Existing Pyth are dropped, but Freiburg is there quickly. I do like that Nip are moving in as a unit, but Rush is here. There's just too many defenders for Nip to just be able to plow through immediately. It's all down to Freiburg now. 1v4. With an MP7 as well, could he go and pick up a different rifle? There was a one up on the plateau, so I'm almost a bit disappointed that Freiburg didn't at least try to run for it, because now that opportunity has closed. He's alone and in a one on four here. The only thing is that he does have the bomb, but that was just a great setup for Optic. Um, and the reason I mentioned that the two previous rounds had gone to the A-bomb side is that it would have been very easy for Optic to sort of mentally say, well, we've we got to defend A a little bit better because yeah. it just got overrun for two rounds. Even if we didn't have rifles and everything, you could still fall into that trap. But they actually had four men hard on the B-bomb side, and that definitely helped to secure a win there. 
Good round for uptake. Just a great start. Yeah, and they should actually save a couple guns. Basically, boom, they upgrade both of those from losses. And this is a perfect spray. Perfect spray opening from Naf, who was holding the line. And basically, you have to come. To, it comes down to whether Nip can move in very quickly with that third man. Freiburg did try and get in there as quickly as he could, but there was just a little bit of a delay, and that gave a chance for Optic to stabilize. And once that happens on that CT side, it gets so difficult for the terrorists to you know, create space to create an opening. So, NIP, because of how good the uh, first few rounds went in this half, they have enough money to go for a full buy. They have the AWP on force. They have full nades to work with. Garrite already going to be dropping that Molotov and drop, making sure that they can't really go aggressive. Instead, it's going to be Mixwell just going on the other side of that smoke. Exist will take out Stan, but Mixwell there to trade. Yeah, so pretty important trade coming in there. Mixwell with the, with the refrag, but still, this is going to favor NIP. It definitely poses a big problem for Optic now that they have to spread their defense a little bit more thinly. Um, and they're keeping three men in B right now, which you can't blame them for. And I kind of do like the fact that Daps is moving up over at the A side as much as he is. I almost wish he would keep going to get a little bit more information right now because they need it. This B hit could be lethal right now. Rush going to be falling back, but a great spray tries to transfer onto the next and a nice shot right to the edge of the box. Almost drops Mixwell. Oh, so close, but he's going to get that flash off for us. Just put some shots through. They might have heard the pull, the pin getting pulled. They were close enough there. Sometimes that's what goes on. You can hear that pin get it coming out when you're on the other side of that smoke. And then boom, you just turn around. Or in this case, Forrest just puts shots through. So good reaction Daps. time there from NIP. But yeah, you're right. Daps, he's going for the flank through the back halls. And there's a bit of a timer now. Nap is going to get caught out in the middle of nowhere. Just out in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere to hide. Nothing to do. And well, now it makes Daps' position well, untenable. He's just not going to be able to really get anything done here. They should not be getting caught off guard by a flank. Yeah, so the big question is, should we should we blame everything on Nat for that round? And I'd say yes. Um, that's that is actually unacceptable because it, they they are obviously in communication. They can talk to each other in the middle of the round. So if if Daps just calls in and says, "Look, I'm flanking the hallways right now. Just stay alive. Don't take any fights. It doesn't even matter. Just don't stay in the chicken coop." As Mo would uh, be screaming right now, just stay back there and um, and wait until I show up. And when I take the fight, then you can go and peek, and it, it could work out a lot better. So do you even play this game? <laughs> yeah, a little bit confusing there, uh, and that's gonna cost Optic quite heavily. So a little wow. bit of a communication error, I would say, on the Optic side. Yeah, maybe some shakiness going in here against NIP. Not every time, it's not every day, obviously, that they get to play against Europeans optics, so they might be lacking a little experience there. There is the boost, and Nath, he's gonna do a fantastic job of baiting. Freiburg will take out Stan, Mixwell drops to get right, but there's still that trap up in the apartments, and Daps will be able to trade one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? What is this? Get right. <laughs> They're actually getting the round. This is unreal. How could this be true? Get right, gonna be going down now, <laughs> making up for last round in one of the most ridiculous plays I've seen in a long time. But it's such a good idea, isn't it? They're just all the time baiting that little boost that's coming around the corner. You see Naf dodging out, and that's just that's just great play. I can't believe he survived as well. Rush coming in to help out. What a round from Optic. But they even saved the op for Mixwell. He was, run, he was running in there as quickly as, as quickly as he could rush, and he just barely makes it in time. So that's huge. That's 4750 that they just saved Optic. And now Mixwell has the AWP, NIP, because of that, that catastrophic round. I mean, there's no beating around the bush. There's no way you should lose versus a hard eco like that. NIP just basically gifting Optic away back into this map because it was looking so good for NIP. No, I mean, in if we're trying to rank sort of levels of stupidity, that round was sort of on par with what NAF was doing in the previous one. So <laughs> I guess it sort of even that evens out. NIP should know better. I mean, uh, right, they did drop the bomb, and that's the one thing. But it seemed like they thought, we all got to run in right now and just take the fight. And there's no reason to. Good trade, though, here coming through Freiburg, picking up that one shot there. So still a favor here for NIP. Stan is showing himself a little bit inside. Got to be careful. He just wants to make sure that life is a little bit more difficult over there, that they can't just walk in for free and get control of that part of the map. NIP has also been making a little bit of noise towards A, but they're starting to rotate back. That's Python Forest making their way towards that bomb and towards the B site. So with 55 seconds left in this, on this clock, I mean, NIP, they're just looking to gather up. They've done their job. They've traded one for one. Now the defense is somewhat, you know, thin over here on the B site. So they go in and get ready to go in as four. Naf is a little bit far away, so it's Stan and Mixwell right now who are in the B-bomb side trying to hold on. And this is going to be such a tough defense. Not easy at all. Good shot from Mixwell, but you see he's trapped behind the statue right now, and he can't make it out. 
And that's the big problem with playing on this B bomb side. Good shot from that once, and he tries to do it again. If he had got that kill, maybe that could have been a thing. And that's he's on the rotation again, but this time, or I guess maybe again, it's a little bit late. Um, not necessarily, I think, his fault. I think it's just that the B bomb side crumbles too quickly. No, he really needed uh, a little bit of help there, Mixwell. If his teammate could have just stayed alive a couple seconds longer, you count on that AWP, then it just becomes impossible, and Forrest holding the angle on Daps, so no possible backstab there either, and IP come right back into the round. Well, here's the big problem when you're defending that B bomb sign. As long as you, on the CT side, you have a man standing over here, and you're behind the statue, your only option, the only thing you have to do is look at this angle, and that works out fine with an AWP, that's a pretty wide angle, but you can make that work, but when, when your guy goes down on this side, then you have to cover this secondary angle, and that's too much. You get trapped in behind both angles, at the same time, it's just not a viable option, and that's what just happened. Um, so a little bit of a shame there. Well, that's that's the, the big weakness of the B site. It's that if you if you're holding SCT, it falls apart so quickly. If NIP, for example, are able to actually pick off one of the guys, because then it, it just sets up crossfires naturally from drop into plateau. If they push onto the site from plateau, it's just this massive crossfire situation for the CTs trying to hold on the site itself. So, so this is why it's one of the trickier bomb sites to hold in CS:GO, and why it, well. Life as a CTV player on this map isn't very fun. No, it definitely isn't. And one of the things, one of the way things you can do as a, as a counter terrorist to try and break it is to put down really good counter grenades on one side of the push, so that the, the terrorist forces sort of end up pushing only one angle at a time. If you can do that successfully, you've got a real good shot of winning the round. But it's so hard to uh, imagine. Great start this time, though. We've got to get some credit to Naf. He's really getting uptick back into this game, even though. They don't really have a lot of equipment right now, and if NIP win this round, they're going to run away with a large portion of this first half. Yeah, they're going to get full control. Now it's all up to get right. He gets that double entry frag onto the B site. Attempted shot there from Rush with that Swag 7. Not going to get it. And it's all on Stanislaw and Dobson. Well, Stanislaw, at least he hits the timing right. He gets in here very quickly. Could trade up for that AK as well, and that's exactly what he's going to do. There's the flash. They're not really going to get too much out of it. Daps is there to back him up. But there's already get right lying in wait. Yeah, and it's just not meant to be. Stanislaw picking up that AK. It's just too tempting for them to back off and hold on to the gun. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's necessarily a, a bad choice either. I mean, right now, Optic should be worried about two things. First of all, Daps and Stanislaw right now each have one kill. They're the two members surviving. I'm not saying they're, you know, only on one kill because they keep running away, but they're keeping in the wrong bomb site essentially. You see exactly. Daps flanking all the time, not really making it work like that. So it's not necessarily their fault. The other thing is, Get Right is playing very well on the terrorist side, and any time that happens, no matter which team in the world you are, you've got to be just a little bit scared. So um, those those two things combined are not working out so well for Optic at the moment. It can be one of the win conditions for NIP, is when Get Right just goes crazy, because he is such a versatile player, as talked about at the beginning of the show on the desk. And really, I mean, I think it was Lurpus, he had that quote where he was just like, you know, sometimes... It looks like everybody around Get Right's playing checkers and he's playing chess, right? He's just, he, it always seems like he's just so far ahead of the opposition when he really gets into the game. He's just constantly reading the defense, constantly getting into, like he's just got this uncanny ability to just sneak his way out onto sites and just break open the defense with a key frag, with a key kill. So, I mean, right now he's just doing it straight up. And once again, straight out on the plateau. So it is Get Right who takes point on this, uh, on this angle, on this part of the map. And you can see, it's not gonna go too well here for Optic because he's already out onto the site. They do have the rifle in the sight, and have another four men stacked in, but Stannis is going to pick up the first kill there, and that's Get Right going down. What a great kill to start of the round here for Optic. They need more, though, and Rush is going to be going down. Exist is already behind the chicken coop here, so he's got such a wide angle where he can cover his teammates right now, and that's going to help out a lot. And Optic, how how could they even retake this bomb side right now? They got the AK, they got a little bit of equipment. I'd say, unless they could find a kill within the next two seconds, might as well just walk away from it. That kill could be Daps, except that Freiburg is there. This is why Forrest can look straight at Connector and not worry at all about Plateau. It's because Freiburg is back there holding in the hallway, making sure that there can be no flank possible. So Daps, once again, going to get shut down. No joy for him. And it's all on Stanislav, but he's holding, he's holding off on the A site. He's actually just on the other side of the map right now, saving that one AK for the next round where his team will be able to buy. But that setup, that post-plant setup for NIP is just so solid. You can really tell how everything fits together nicely. Freiburg making sure the flank doesn't come through so Forrest can focus on his own angle, exist with the wide angle over by uh, Chicken Coop. I mean, they just had everything covered NIP. I do want to give some credit to, uh, to, to sort of the... The, the flank attempts from Daps. I, feel, I still think it's a very good idea, but flanking and Counter-Strike is so incredibly hard because if you do it too early, 
then you're gonna they will be looking your way and you'll end up dying and then everything is bad and if you do it too late well we see what happens in in two of those rounds with taps right it's just a couple of seconds too late and the defense is already gone so you know timing is is everything in counter-strike right now and and that lurker role is very very hard to play get right doing the entrying here again rush is going to be out of it but a good refract coming from the status law that's what they need a lot more of exactly they didn't need to be in position to trade frag Makes well, I think he's, yeah, he was trying to body block it, but he misses it. In the end, though, Exist, he will hear that nade, you know, he will hear that body block, so a little bit of uh, information there gained for NIP. They're going to have to worry about somebody holding up close, which is why they're, you know, basically checking all of these corners. Exist has now cleared out danger, the little stairwell there, connecting the apartments to underpass it. Well, makes well, just goes for the peak, just to get that info. Doesn't get lucky, though. Nobody there waiting for him. Yeah, that would have been great if he could have pop flashed himself into a kill, but doesn't quite happen, but look at the setup on the A bomb side. This is a bit unusual if you're playing on the CT side to have three men stacked up here, but it's uh, potentially going to give them a very good shot of winning this round. NIP have time to rotate back to B, but once you're this far into the hallway, you tend not to. And look at this great boost. Forrest standing on top of Pyth right now, or on top of Freiburg, just to look into the sm over the smoke here, and that's going to give them a pretty good chance. Now they're rushing in through, right on the other side though. Nafly still here with the M4, they haven't seen him, and he's a little bit early on the trigger there. Gets a kill, but goes down. That He could have probably waited a couple of seconds, and Forrest, clean with the sniper shot there. It's going to be Stanislaw left in a one-on-two. Nice little fake plant there by Freiburg. They hadn't checked the back of the site, so he's making sure that nobody is lurking before he actually sticks that bomb plant. And now they know Stanislaw, he has to be somewhere else on this map. And so Stanislaw, as you guys can see, towards Balcony. And he's going to get peaked by Freiburg. There's the info for NIP. And now Forrest and Freiburg, they have perfect positioning. Stanislaw gets the read on it, and he is going to try and take the fight with Forrest, but he's not going to get the kill. Instead, it will be Forrest getting a second kill in the round for himself, saving that AWP going into the next one. Uh, you got get right on your screen now. Ten kills, five deaths, pretty solid headshot percentage. But the most important thing right now is that he's getting a lot of high impact frags. Like the one we saw where he opens up on that B site, charging in first. He creates the space for his team to then follow onto that site and you know, capitalize off of that. So it's a very hard role. It's a hard, it's a role that gets criticized quite a bit. Entry fragging is what we call it when you're the first man onto the site, you know, taking the fight. But um, you know, get right, he's perfectly capable of it. And once again for Optic, I mean, they've had a couple of rounds where they saved a little, they try to buy up this time, they have the scout on standing for, and that's about it, and not much else is going to happen. Dap's just finding no luck at all. He's either the first man to go down or he's trying to flank, so he's just having a terrible game right now, and um, it's hard to sort of break out of that, especially when you don't have the equipment right now. Nip is yeah, going to be pushing onto the A-bomb site right now, and they're not wasting any time at all. A little bit of a refrag coming in. So a good shot there from Rush long distance, but I don't think it'll change the outcome of this particular round. Get right, and then Freiburg near simultaneous kills. There's Rush and Mixwell go down. It will be 9-2 heading into the 12th round here. I don't know how you put a break on this type of NIP team. I mean, it's not like Optic Gaming haven't tried different things, but um, they need they need they need to try even more right now. Let's just like up something else. It could be worse, you know. It could be one round of support here for Optic and ten for NIP if they hadn't somehow won that hard eco. But then yeah. they lose with the rifles, and that's the that's the main thing here is that Optic are struggling to pick up rounds when they actually have the guns, when they have the nades and everything necessary. It should be the turnaround where you know they start actually chaining rounds together. That's when things will get interesting, and they need to make it happen. They need that six rounds basically at the end of this first half to be competitive going into the second half. If net, if NIP get up to ten five. Or even 11-4, I think that NIP are perfectly capable of just crushing out this first uh, this first map here. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is this is already starting to look really dark right now for uh, for the optic side, which is a bit of a shame because as we've been saying, they they've really been playing uh, above their level. It seems yeah. recently they they've shown some good stuff, uh, but now maybe they just are not quite ready to play a team of NIP's caliber here. Already two men down, Freiburg. Not quite getting the battle there against Naf, who's been doing a pretty good job. He ends up getting a frag on him. Now it's three versus four, and Exist also going to be going down. It's Naf again stepping up, rotating back in here for a fight with Pint, and he's just out of health. Stan is all going to be going down and Mixwell. We've talked a lot about him. He hits a good shot, but the bomb is still on Forrest, and he's going to be able to make the crossing in to get the fart. Oh, Mix going to be going down as well. And get right in Forrest. That old duo going to be winning the round. That's just brutal for Mix. He throws down that smoke right behind the Molotov as well, right? So he's hoping that NIP are going to be focused on that smoke, that they're just going to be worried about him trying to, you know, play an angle behind it. But get right, again, 
just you know one step ahead. He's already in drop. He's ready for Mixo to try and rotate through. And NIP once again just shutting off the gaming out of the map. Two thousand dollars pretty much across the board here for Optic Gaming, so not a whole lot to work with. And this is now the 13th round, 10 to the score. NIP just a massive lead. Naf is doing a good. I mean, Naf is actually you know he's had a couple of good rounds here, but it just doesn't seem like his teammates are capable of capitalizing off of his performance. It can't just be the one guy on that B defense. It needs to be everybody stepping up and everybody landing shots. And also on the NIP team, Freiburg has actually overtaken Get Right right now in terms of. Uh top frag so that's pretty impressive and he is definitely a solid player for a while much criticized right no. there was definitely especially maybe early this year and at the beginning of last year everyone was saying get rid of Freiburg he's had his time yes um, struggle part of it. Get, get him out of the team but I mean I'd say some of us were against that for uh, for maybe good reason uh, it's just the structure lack of structure Oof. Freiburg is a little pissed you curse to Manders <laughs> One shot, boom, headshot, he's gone. Rush will come in and actually pick up a good fight with Get Right. And now he has an AK to play with here, but he is getting wrapped by Exist, who's already off of the plateau. And the rest of Nip are coming up the plateau as well. So it's all going to be on Rush. Daps is, all, is still on the A site, hasn't fully rotated into connector yet. He needs to haul and get here quick because his teammate is about to have a bit of a rough time. Exist will spot him out soon. And there we go. Easy shot for Exist. And now it's all on Daps. C775, not really the best gun to be dealing with a long range fight. I mean, he is trying to play the angles, going for the shoulder peaks, but eventually Exist will hunt him down. So three kills, four Exist, you know, nice. You know, just get those eco frags in there. That's basically, you know, your feel-good moment when you're on that T side is when you're actually running up against pistols. Now, Semler, you said 10-5 was not a good score for uptake. 9-6 was where they needed to be. Right now, 11-4 is the best they can do. So this is like, you know, some sort of auction where Optic are just constantly getting uh, less and less for it. This is not working out so well. And as a response, and again, I, I like it when teams keep trying. Even if they're losing, you're going to keep trying something else, right? So they've gone with a double up this time. And again, it's an attempt to try and change what's happening. And you should definitely credit that. Good shot from Mixwell, but now he's in a bit of a dangerous corner here. Close range. Wins that fight versus Friber. Oh, what a no-scope! Exist going to be going down and Mixwell here. Finally coming into play, fantastic round so far from the Spanish player. That's going to be, that's why they have him on the team. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a playmaking round, you know. This is what we keep talking about. We were talking about it when we were watching Stewie 2K on Cloud9. You need some of these players that will make a play for your team. And right now, that's maybe the first time we've seen someone actually do that in 13, 14 rounds. Yeah, just going above and beyond, right? There's been double kills, but like a triple kill where you just single-handedly stop a rush. NIP, I mean, they were perfectly capable of just taking over underpass there and swarming up onto that A site. Mixwell, though, held the line. So, I mean, you do need those players who are capable of the flashy, the flashy plays, exactly. You know, just coming in and actually, you know, chaining kills together, just taking control of the round, taking control of the situation. And if you look at the position of the rest of his team, I mean, Daps was in the A-bomb side. That's a fourth kill for Mixwell. My god, what a, yeah, what a way to showcase his skill here. But look at the minimap right now, there's nobody near. Daps is the only one sort of halfway close in the round like this one. And, and that's why it's so dangerous. If Mixwell even just trades one for one there, that's it. You know, he's given up so much. But those are the sort of risks you have to take sometimes. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about that. And it's, it is the sign of a player that's, that is going places, I would say, European. to be able to do that. European. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, well... I think Still, no, still he's in it. Yeah, but we do have they, they exist and, and they've been there in the past as well. Uh, people who are willing to uh, to make a bit of a play for their team. Don't want to bring up swag, obviously. But uh, <laughs> just saying. I get depressed. Just saying. I get depressed every time I think about it, man. Cannot. Don't don't mention swag. Now, Hashtag free swag. Well, there's Mixwell making more play. Oh, what? Yeah, he right. takes down Pike as well. This guy is out of control. Oh, well, that was unfortunate. Get right just nades himself. Mixwell is playing so hard right now. It's tilting Get right halfway across the map, and he's even he's pushing. He's flanking them with an AWP. Mixwell has just had enough. He said, "All right, look. Even if the rest of my team is unable to play, I will just try and beat NIP on my own." I kind of respect that. Eventually, I mean, there is the defense set up here. Get right, we'll find the first pick. Daps is no longer in drop and exist because of Get right stepping out. Exist with the dropping headshot onto Stanislaw. 
that brings it back to a two on two with Daps finally managing to actually have an impact here. But there is, in the meantime, a lurk. And Get Right's gonna walk right out connector. Unfortunately for him, he does not look right. Daps catches him off guard, and Freiburg had to come through there to bring it back. He had to get that trade. Just doesn't happen. So it is an 11 4 finish here at the end of the first half. That's, that, that lurk from Get Right is so incredibly madly timed with Daps walking into the corner. Any second, like, if he had been just a little bit slower, that would have been Get Right getting that kill. So what an incredible first half here. I mean, Optic showing something at the end of the half. It just can't help but think it's too late. But it's just individual plays, right? They need to step up. They need to wake up earlier. So we'll be right back for the second half after this break. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the first half of the first match here in the second week of E-League, and we have all Swedish European powerhouse NIP just crushing Optic on that first half. They did show a little bit. I think NAF definitely had some good rounds in spite of that one big mistake in the two versus three mm -hmm. early on, but then also Mixwell stepping up at the end and showing what he's all about. So that was very exciting, but is it enough? It gives you hope for the second half, at least. If, they'd have just, if it had just been a blowout and nobody stepped up, no flashy plays, no nothing for Optic at the end of that first half, then I'd have been like, nip all the way, right? But at least Optic, they showed some fight at the end there, and that's what's necessary. They can always come back. Even 11-4, I mean, you can still come back on the T side if you just continuously break the, the CT economy the way that nipped it to them in the first half. Optic, they just weren't able to get a full buy round after round. They kept having to go back to pistols to save money, and obviously that makes the job easier for the terrorists. So now, now it's Optic in the pistol round, and they aren't wasting any time. Straight out onto B Plateau. Oh, but Exist is here, and actually they've got backup as well, looking for a fight with the USP, trying to make it around the corner. Great shot from Pith coming in, and Mixwell going to take one, then two. Exist coming up with a double kill, and now it's a one on two here. A Spanish player caught in a sandwich, and he knows that he wanted to fight his way out before Forrest showed up, and that's actually a pretty good instinct, but who could account for the fact that Exist was going to land a triple in that round? Now NIP. What could stop them at this point? That's that's the confidence play coming in from NIP, man. The no zero respect, just run in, and they go and challenge on plateau. Their whole point there was in case optic, if optic were going for the straight rush, no time wasted at all. It didn't matter because NIP still got that flash out, so that it would, it would have disrupted the rush. But they were looking for any kind of setup. If optic were trying to walk in slowly, set up a nade or anything like that, boom, exist would be in your face looking for the headshots. Still turns out he did. This, uh, this hurts my soul a little bit, Samla. We've got five Tech Nines in armor, and nobody's rushing. Have they not read the Counter-Strike manual? How the game is supposed to be played? Tech Nine rush, don't stop. Just keep going and shooting at the same time. That is the power of this pistol. It is remarkably accurate when you're running and shooting. You have 24 bullets, so you can just continue to spam for a long time. And it hits like a truck. It hit, hits like a truck, and if you run into something like a FAMAS or, or even an M4A1, 
they're gonna end up running out of bullets before they can they can kill all of you. That's what it, what it's down to. When you have armor, it's gonna take a while anyway. So now it seems like they are gonna try and speed it up. Maybe try and see if they can send the save on site, but. Freiburg and Getright just not even interested. Excellent work, Freiburg. The first point of contact there. Getright took advantage of it. There will be a delayed push coming in here from Stanislaw towards that A site. Two kills for him to open it up, but Getright, man, insult to injury. He uses a Tech 9 to shut Stanislaw down. The weapon of his teammates. It's just not going to happen. Swag 7 there for Getright. Daps gets, catches them lined up, though. Getright and Pyth taking bullets to the face and exists. It's not going to be the last man alive, so a bit too close there for NIP considering they, all, they pretty much all invested in rifles for it to come down to a 1v1. But that also shows you the power of the Tech-9. It's so just like double kills all over the place, headshots all over the place with that pistol. It's so dangerous. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit shocked they couldn't actually make it out of that round at the end. Again, Optic, uh, you see sort of Stanislaw and Daps, who were the two people to get double kills in that round. But once they get those double kills, it's like they slow down. You know, yeah. they, they, they stop trying to make plays. They're not being aggressive enough. Then they're letting NIP take the initiative every single time. And at some point, that, that doesn't work any longer. At some point, they're going to have to just say, no, we're on a roll right now. We're just going to continue to go. I think they've, they have too much respect for NIP right now. And I mean, the way that NIP are playing, you, you'd say, well, of course they do. But you, you have yeah. to forget about that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's very difficult. That's the, that's the mark of, ch of a champion, you know, a champion winning team championship winning team rather the, the ability to just kind of like put the first half out of your head focus on your game play the game that you want and you know completely disregard that you just took a massive beating throughout the entire first half I and mean, it's tough to do and it hasn't really changed i mean nip 13 rounds now optic gaming still sitting on four but with how good these pistols are you can try and look you can slow play it and try and look for the picks it's just much more difficult they're trying to bait out all of these nades from nip and they're doing a pretty good job actually because look at this only three nades left here for nip to stop this push yeah, we got to point out, Optic only made this buy because they got all those kills in the last round. Otherwise, it would be insane to buy a pistol and armor again. And they're trading a little bit there. It's just coming in with a shot on Stan. And he's going to follow it up by Chicken Poop. And this is not working out. Optic with a massive risk in this round. This is such a big risk to buy. I mean, you buy pistol armor in the second round after losing pistol because that makes sense. Third round in, you only do it if you get as many kills as they did in the second round. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. But when the return on investment is this, one kill on Pyth, that's nowhere near good enough. And, and actually, I don't mind that they did it. I think it makes sense. If you're behind this far, you kinda, you got to go for the Hail Mary, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work out. So just, uh, I kind of, I, I do appreciate this uh, this level from Optic. I think that's a good choice. Well, let's see. I mean, but now they're, they should definitely have the full YOLO approach. And they are just charging through the smoke. I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? Get in there. No fear whatsoever. They don't really have the gear this time around, but Forrest with the MP9. Danger of getting over, over rushed there. Uh, over rushed. <laughs> Rush well, find kill won't. on him eventually. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, that pressure. They're just everywhere right now in IP. I think Pi's even waiting for uh, Forrest to cross in front of him there, so I'm taking the shot. And look, I mean, now you could also tell NIP don't care any longer either. They're just running all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they lack of respect. I mean, well, Optic haven't really given them anything to respect. The bomb gets dropped in drop-down room, and now it's going to be on Stanislaw in a 1v2. They are low on NIP's sign. Freiburg and Pyth both are on half HP, and there's the shot coming out from Pyth with that AWP. Nice headshot from Stanislaw, though. Catches out Freiburg, but then Pyth will not let him get away. There was a chance, there was a chance to maybe run that bomb back towards the A site. But it just wasn't meant to be, and a big round coming in from Pyth. Triple kill with the AWP, so everyone's getting a piece of the pie here on the NIP team as they are leading 15 to 4 and are currently on map point. One more round, and they're going to see the first map here. Get Right is back in the lead with 20 kills, so definitely a good job on him as well. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's doing massive work right now, Get Right. And that's great to see because he is one of the hardest working players out there. Kind of guy who spends a Friday night just learning new smokes. Instead of going out and drinking with the buds, so, I mean he's a monster. And well, right now off the gaming, they've just you know they're just pacing themselves in this round. They obviously saved in the last round to give them a shot here. They have the rifles, they have the nades. They just have a, whole, a long road ahead of them to get back into this and take this map to overtime. So they really do have to you know start repeating that mantra. It's just like one round at a time. You only focus on the one round. You don't even look at the score. I do say that, but there is this one thing that's actually called the get right challenge which uh, I've, I've noticed is actually a new thing every time, but it basically involves doing a lot of shots in less than a minute. So if that ever happens, never say yes to that. Just just leave leave get right to his devices. Just walk away. Yeah, don't take walk that up. Sadakus did once, and um, 
He's Canadian, so I think he managed it, but still. Um, we do have the uh, 20th round coming up here, and the last shot, the last chance really for Optic to make an impact and try for a, what would be a bit of a miraculous comeback there. Running into a bomb site with four people on, and Forrest is flanking. This is a recipe for disaster if you're on the terrorist side. And get right in the corner, trigger control gets one and two, and he's got Freiburg there to back him up, just waiting patiently, and then Forrest, oh my god, NIP showing Optic. This is how the round should have played when Daps tried to flank. This is what you wanted, and we just wanted to tell you that's how it's done. Uh, this is how you play CS. Welcome to the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so brutal, isn't it? Like, everything you try to ac accomplish on the CT side, it gets turned right back on you once you get to be on the on the T side. That's so brutal. Just maximum amount, maximum amount of confidence, basically. Just closing out this first map in decisive fashion, and it's tough when the desk starts off the segment this morning with, hey, you know, these, these are actually really good maps for Optic. They could give us a bit of a show. And if you're like, well, no, actually, this is the difference between EU and NA. Welcome to the show, boys.